uh, your excellency uh, uh, let me thank you uh, at, uh, at the outset for giving us this uh, time uh, this is a, a batch of uh, 171 officers uh, 168 of them are from the Indian Administrative Service uh, of the batch of 2012 and there are three officers uh, from the Royal Bhutan uh, Civil Services. Uh, as a profile of the batch, 20% uh, of them are women. Uh, and this is a pretty low percentage uh, considering that uh, when I joined the service also we were just about that much. Uh, it hasn't grown substantially. It did grow a little bit in, a, in the past few years, it reached about 30% to come down again. 33% uh, are uh, with a rural background, and that's been a kind of a consistent uh, uh, trend of, uh, about that kind of number there. Uh, the age, uh, as you uh, would know, has been going up, the average age. Uh, the average age right now is about 28, and this has been the trend in the last few years. Uh, which has made young officers comparatively fewer. So there are just about uh, six officers who were uh, under the age of 24. Uh, so th that's broadly the kind of uh, uh, profile that they have. Uh, in terms of their uh, academic backgrounds, 131 of them out of 168 are uh, either engineers or doctors or with a management background, or a commerce background, or a background in science. Uh, there are just about uh, uh, 29 who have a background in the arts, which is a different kind of a phenomena that is uh, emerging. <coughs> uh, they, have, uh, they joined the academy last year in September, and uh, thereafter they had their foundation course in uh, Masuri, and then they went for uh, the customary winter study tour for two months. I went around the country and uh, got back in February and since then uh, uh, they've been uh, uh, trained in their professional uh, program at Masuri. Uh, broadly, uh, they are now a little familiar with the uh, structure and mechanisms of uh, government, how the government works, uh, the programs, uh, and through the Bharat Darshan, uh, they've had a very good uh, kind of exposure to realities across the uh, country. Uh, at the academy, as you, uh, as you know, uh, they have been, uh, uh, they get instruction in uh, public administration, in uh, politics, in uh, constitution, in management, uh, in um, uh, contemporary affairs, in uh, information technology, and uh, uh, most of all in law and uh, uh, languages which they have to learn uh, to adjust to the uh, states uh, allotted to them. In the academy, the uh, focus uh, has been uh, largely on uh, developing uh, a sensitivity uh, to uh, ethics, essentially, and aesthetics, and that's been the uh, long uh, tradition of the academy to make them sensitive uh, to these two issues and uh, uh, to, be, to uh, develop them in the direction of uh, excelling wherever they go and uh, be creative in whatever they do. So our aim in the academy has been uh, to develop them as uh, not only uh, civil servants but as individuals who would be able to excel and be creative uh, in their lives. Uh, it is in that kind of direction uh, that we have been working. Uh, to, to give you a bit of a flavor of uh, uh, their experience, uh, I would be requesting uh, two of our young uh, colleagues to come up and uh, share um, their uh, experiences uh, in the last uh, eight months uh, that they have uh, been uh, in the academy. So once again, uh, I would really uh, thank you on behalf of the academy, uh, my colleague uh, Roli Singh and all uh, my younger colleagues here for having uh, spared the time uh, to address and to guide and to inspire uh, our young uh, officers uh, who are here with us. I would uh, uh, request my uh, young colleague and friend uh, Thavas Seelan uh, to uh, give you uh, some of his uh, experiences over the last uh, uh, eight months. Come Thavas Seelan. <coughs>
Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee, uh, Director of the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Sri Padamveer Singh, officials of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, faculty members, and ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to all of you. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to have an audience with the first citizen of the country. And I'd like to take this occasion to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and meeting us today, sir. We're more than seven months into our training, and uh, I'd like to give you a brief glimpse into our experiences thus far. It was the 3rd of September 2012 uh, when we were all formally initiated into our respective services in the salubrious environs of the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration in Missouri. The day was to individually and collectively change our lives forever, and change it did. We began with the foundation course on that day alongside friends from the Indian Foreign Service and the Indian Police Service. The course marked the beginning of a fabulous journey, a journey in the service of a great nation. We began a new chapter in our lives with a heightened sense of responsibility. What happened over the next three months introduced us to this newfound reality and provided strong underpinnings for the challenges that lay ahead of us. Almost every single civil servant in this country, without exception, would agree that the foundation course is one of the most memorable periods in their lives. It was no different for us. For one, it celebrated a first brush with the world of civil services. But more importantly, every single one of us reminisces the delightful times we spent in the company of our friends from the other services who are to be our lifelong friends. The course combined classroom-based academic inputs in the subjects of public administration, law, economics, management, and political science, along with a plethora of co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Initially, we found time to be a real constraint but then we realized that we could push ourselves to do so much more with so little of it. An important ingredient of the course, sir, is to develop a sense of esprit de coup among the participants in order to foster a greater sense of coordination between the different services. This was ensured by providing us with multiple fora, both formal and informal, to work together and to get to know each other better. The maxim, a healthy mind and a healthy body, is taken rather seriously back home in the academy. We begin every morning with a PT and jogging in the clean, brazing air of Missouri. Attainment of physical fitness is an essential element of an officer's personality and a prerequisite for being successful on the field. We sure that the training that we're being imparted would stand us in good stead. The week-long trek that was organized was both literally and metaphorically the high point of the course. It exposed us to the natural grandeur and pristine beauty of the Himalayas. It was, without doubt, one of the most exhilarating experiences in our lives. It was a significant learning experience in group dynamics and helped us develop stronger bonds with each other. The trek made us push ourselves further and further and understand the limits of our endurance. It also made us humbler and evoked a sense of respect for nature. Midway through the course, a village visit was organized to expose the officer trainees to the realities of rural India through a very structured study. It provided us with an opportunity to stay in villages and interact intensively with the rural populace to understand and appreciate the concerns and priorities. But it was not all work for us during the course. Uh, it provided us with a platform to uncover the hidden talents of the officer trainees through multiple cultural programs that, that were organized over a three-month three period. Any rendition of a training experience would be incomplete without a mention of the India Day. On this day, the culture, customs, arts and crafts, and cuisine of different regions of India will be on display through a combination of indoor and outdoor activities. Last but not the least, a mention needs to be made about the faculty of the academy. A teacher opens the door and you enter it yourself. The academy prides itself on having faculty who are practitioners, born on different services, with years of experience on the field. We cannot but thank them enough for whatever we've gained over the last seven months and what's in store for the rest of the training period. The academy makes it a point to regularly invite who's who in the field of academia and governance to address, on, address us on subjects that are of critical relevance to us. Now I'd like to invite my colleague and friend, Ms. Nagalakshmi, to share her experiences on our professional training. Thank you very much. Honorable President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee, uh, Director of the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Shri Padamveer Singh, officials of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, respected faculty members, and my dear officer trainees. We began with phase one of our professional training on the 17th of December at the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration in Masuri with a week-long module IS in perspective. This was followed by the winter study tour known in popular parlance as the Bharat Darshan. It is designed to provide experiential training to the officer trainees through travels across the country 
and attachment with different excuse me uh, with different institutions including the defense forces public and private sector institutions urban local bodies and ngos we spent the next 2 months traveling across the phenomenon called india experiencing first hand her linguistic historical ecological cultural diversity and heritage these travels across the length and breadth of the country allowed us to understand the varying shades of administrative setups and also appreciate the sometimes subtle but often stark differences in the lives and habits of the people the next few weeks in the academy has been designed to provide us module based inputs on district and land administration rural development agriculture urban management health and education infrastructure project management law and order and so on these are supplemented by concurrent sessions on basic economic principles management political concepts information and communication technology this also includes a week long appreciation course with the bureau of parliamentary studies and training we would complete our phase 1 training by mid june post which we would move to our respective states for our district training which has a duration of roughly 52 weeks one year of district training in effect is a drill to enable the officer trainees to see to see study and live the paradox that is the quintessential india with its unfathomable diversity myriad challenges and opportunities we we would study the administrative setup interact with the people and their representatives in order to understand the paradigm of development and the dynamic shaping the same it is important that each of us realize the role we need to play as change agents if our nation is to shift trajectories and surge ahead in the path of development i assure you sir we will all endeavor to live up to the expectations of the people and the service thank you shri <laughs> padambir singh director lal bahadur shastri national academy of administration mushuri shrimati roli singh course coordinator and deputy director of the academy officer trainees of 2012 batch of indian administrative service officer trainees of the royal bhutan's civil service distinguished members of the faculties ladies and gentlemen first of all i would like to welcome you to the historic darbar hall of rashtrapati bhavan many momentous events are witnessed by these beautiful columns and walls when this building was constructed the colonial power of british empire was at its zenith it was between the first world war and second world war in 1931 this hall has also witnessed the transfer of power where the first governor general of india independent india lord mountbatten who happened to be the last governor general of imperial india was shown in the first indian governor general chakraborty rajagopal achari and subsequently the president of the indian republic dr rajendra prasad on 26 january 1950 was showed in therefore i am happy that when you are entering into your career to be the part of the administrative setup of this great country the largest functional democracy of india 
being the home of 16% of the world population, I have the privilege of welcoming you to this historic hall. I also welcome the officer's training of the government civil service of His Majesty's Government of Bhutan. Their participation in this training program reflects the very warm and cordial relationship which we have with this Himalayan Kingdom. And particularly, I had the opportunity of watching from a very close quarter how a king himself, being the instrument of change from absolute monarchy to elected parliamentary democracy and converting the absolute monarchy into constitutional monarchy in that Himalayan kingdom. I congratulate you on the success of one of the most difficult examinations which speaks of your academic excellence. You have proved your merit by successfully passing this examination and during the next 30-35 years in different phases, you will have to show your merit, you will have to attain excellence. Surely in course of training, your faculty members will give you lessons, will speak the history of the evolution of this service. Indian Civil Service, shortly ICS, was the most coveted service for the educated Indians for a very long time. If I remember correctly, the first Indian who succeeded in this competitive difficult examination in those days which was held in UK, not in India, in 1869, was Satyendranath Tagore, the elder brother of poet Rabindranath Tagore. Thereafter, nothing prevented the Indian to go to compete and to defeat their British counterparts in the most difficult civil service examinations. Indian civil servants, even in the colonial days, have produced some of the brilliant persons. Quite a few of them have contributed immensely in the national struggle for freedom of our great country. Of course, the first name comes to my mind is Suhas Chandra Bose. Another name, many of you will remember, Rishi Aravinda. In the early part of the last century, he was the leader of the revolutionary movement, which later on into a serious